We're so glad to have you here on the show today. Another terrific edition of the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, I'm Megan Mozak, and it's a pleasure to be back in the studio with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we have a terrific program lined up for you today. I want to make sure that you have two pieces of information as we kick off today's show. And that's the phone number and the website to get connected to the Retirement Education Foundation. Because throughout the program, we're going to be sharing with you about the courses that the foundation sponsors with the goal to help you become more confident about your retirement. And that is more important, more crucial than ever before. So jot these things down. The phone number 800-240-8981. The website is retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk, Paul, great to be back with you. I want to talk about timing as it relates to our retirement. Is it ever too early or can it be too late? I know both of you have some strong opinions on this. Well, you know, that's a common question we get in our classes is, am I just, is it too early to think about planning for retirement or am I too late? And and I mean, when you stop to think about that question, you you heard me sort of giggle. It's, It's kind of funny. Like I have an opinion on where this idea comes from, but too early or too late to plan in general. Just think about that. Just think about that question. The answer is, it's never too early. It's never too late. Right now is the time you have to plan because so many of you are making bad choices about just about everything with your money. Once you've turned 50, 55 years old, everything needs to be driven by your plan. How much risk you're taking, how much income you're taking, when can you retire, what choices you make all needs to be driven by a plan. And I think, Paul, some of the confusion, and we're going to clarify this as we go through the, 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 the radio show today, is what is a plan? Because I think a lot of people think they have a plan and they really don't have a comprehensive plan. But, Paul, I think there's some psychological components to this, too. Do you want to talk about that? Well, yeah, you know, it's interesting. You couldn't help. You, you giggle there for a second, right? And, and it's because we do this every day. And, and, of course, it's obvious to us because what we do But one of the things that we hear all the time when we are sitting with people is, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the headwinds. One of the biggest headwinds to even thinking about retirement or actually making decisions is people. This is a source of anxiety for a lot of people, right? Retirement is a source of uncertainty. It's often symbolic with ending things. It's symbolic with loss, whether it's your health, whether it's your job, productivity, who you are as a person, right? And, yeah, your and what identity, do we, what, right, Paul? Your, your identity, identity, right? And what do people typically do when they're faced with things they're not comfortable with, right? They avoid it. They avoid, right? They kick the ball down the, the road. They kick the can, and they don't want to think about it. And I think that's part of the challenge we're facing is there's this huge psychological headwind that people don't want to think about retirement, and because of that, that's when they get into trouble. And we spend a lot of time in the class, I know, talking about this subject. Paul, you know, it's funny, and as you're describing that, I'm thinking one group of people like that, and then there's another group of people who, when they don't understand something completely, they avoid. Like, yes. I mean, we call it, it's anxiety, but, you know, yeah. for some men, we're too macho to be scared of something. So let's just call it when we don't under fully understand something, when we don't understand how much I can afford to take out of my accounts, when I can retire, will I outlive my money? How do I protect my surviving spouse and then my family? When you have well-educated people that have been very successful at accumulating their wealth, confronted with a, really, you guys don't know. I'm telling you, you don't know the answer. And so you keep searching for something instead of really sitting down and planning to figure out what you have to decide whether you have what you need to give you what you want. And so look, I know who we attract in our classes. I know who are listening to our shows. And many of you have a lot of wealth and are very successful, highly educated people. You got to attend an eight hour course. This is being offered by a charity. It's Pure advanced retirement planning. It's it's like a master's level retirement planning course. All you have to do to register is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, you, you said something that that I think is really important and, and we don't often talk about. And I still I think it's still driven by anxiety. 
But, you know, when people, there are some people out there, especially men, who are highly successful in their lives and they're used to being competent and, uh, and knowing things and understanding. They know how the clock is built. They, if they don't understand it, their tendency is to not do anything. Again, driven by fear and anxiety, but it's sort of couched in this, well, I need to know more. I need to know more. I mean, how often, Kirk, have you met someone in class that has said, you know what, I, I, have, I don't know enough. I want to keep going to more classes, read more books, keep learning and learning and learning. And it's not because really they want to learn. It's because of fear. It really it's, is because it's of one, fear. It's 100% fear and anxiety, Paul. And I, I want to make sure I want to make sure we, we come back to this because I think there is I think you're on to something with this really well educated uh affluent people who are avoiding they're avoiding retirement and they're avoiding planning for retirement and the theory is the theory and i want to come back to this next segment because i i really want to spend a segment on this is that i can't get hurt if i keep working i can if i keep going and just push this down the road Nothing. It can only help me, right? I'm only. I've got another a, a one less year of savings I need to spend in retirement. I got one more year of growth, one more year of savings, and they think by avoiding. So I want to make sure we come back to that. Don't forget that, Paul, because I think so many people are doing this. Look, at the end of the day, it comes down to this: everything for retirement needs to be driven based upon what do I need to give me what I want in retirement. I know that is. I'm we're. There's only so much we can convince you guys and sh- shake you guys through a radio. That's why the eight hours is so important. So we can show so many of you, you have what you need to give you what you want in retirement. And to quote Warren Buffett, you have to be insane to risk something you have for something you don't need. You've won. You've won. But you're unable to accept the fact that you don't understand all the levers And that's what the class gives you. It gives you eight hours of master's level education where you're going to literally learn every lever about retirement planning, taxes, sequence of return risk, how much income I can take, that how do I diversify my portfolio so I have pivots, accounts that I can pivot to during times of volatility so I don't have to change my lifestyle. You have to attend one of the eight hour courses. They're being taught at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. We'll be back. There's much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. It's always a pleasure to be in the studio with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation, and they are financial instructors. They're part of the team that teaches these intensive retirement planning courses that we've been telling you about and that we want you to get registered for. I want to send you to the website so you can choose the date and location that works best for you. They do fill up quickly, so reserve your spot today. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register 800-240-8981. Keep in mind, these courses are offered virtually or in person at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. So call or go online today and get registered. We've been talking about timing today, and as they say, timing is everything, and that's true when it comes to your retirement. Though, Kirk and Paul, as I've been thinking about this, you know, I think most people believe they'll be able to choose their own retirement date, but you say that's not always the case. Well, Megan, I think this is why you can't avoid and put off doing comprehensive retirement planning. I really think and Paul, I know, has some really interesting data points. He did some research about the show and some fascinating things he found. But I, look, our experience tells us it, it's only like, you know, 25, 30 percent of you. And, and I'm curious to hear Paul's statistics because he has the numbers. Our, our experience is only 25 to 30 percent of you will get to choose when you retire. And there is no correlation with how smart you are. If you're an engineer, CPA, CFO, CEO. You are, there's a a large percentage of you who will not get to choose your date of retirement. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And there's a lot of research around this. And this is why we can't avoid doing comprehensive planning. 
I will jump up and down on the table in in the studio trying to convince listeners to go to an eight hour course at one of the major universities. This is a master levels course. This is this is not for the average baby boomer who has saved two hundred thousand dollars. This is for that person that has saved a million, two, three, four, five million dollars. This is an advanced course on how to know. Do I have enough? How much can I take? What's the most tax efficient way to do it? You got to plan now because tomorrow you might not have a job. And I know, Paul, you have some st- statistics around this. Well, you know, I, I think, and you, Kirk, you, you were pretty dang close to the number here. I, I mean, I, I think it just it sort of reflects a general opinion that we think we are in control of every decision. Like we all think we get to choose everything that's important. Oftentimes decisions get made for us. AARP did a study. And, and you were right on. In, in fact, it's probably even a little worse. You know, approximately 65% of Americans basically don't retire, retire involuntarily. They're either laid off or forced to work. But the, the, the balance, the 35%, often they're not forced to retire or they're not, you know, they're not fired. But, you know, their hours get cut. They're not treated well by supervisors. Working conditions aren't great. They experience discrimination and leave, quote, voluntarily, but in some ways are pushed out. The reality is all of you who are listening think that you are going to decide when you retire. And I hate to say it, at some point, age discrimination exists. And we see it. We see it every day. We see it. We're seeing it forward right now. How many people have been laid off and forced to retire? Right. How many people? Oh, there's more coming and more coming. There's more coming. How many people have you met, Kirk, that were not ready to retire? And next thing they know, they're forced to retire, and they weren't ready. They weren't yeah, prepared. It's amazing. I, I, I mean, I, we can line them up. The, the people attending our courses, line them up of people who thought they were, and I, I won't say what levels, I, I, but these are important people in their, in their large, large companies, very important people who thought they were indispensable in their mid to late fifties, some younger, unfortunately. And they said, no, you got to go. And, and look, do, is there a recession around the corner? Or are we in a recession? We can have that debate. I don't even want to have that debate. The point is the fed has told you they're going to break the economy. They have to break the economy. They need to force layoffs. They have to slow the inflation down. Whether it is a recession, a health event, Age discrimination. You've gotten expensive. You're not as efficient as younger people. They, the younger people do more faster, understand the technology, and can get more done for a lot less. Whatever the reasons that we can stack up, health is a big one, folks. Everyone thinks we're, we all think we're invincible. We all, we're very healthy, our diets, our exercise. And the next thing you know, you have a stroke, you have a heart attack, something happens to your spouse, something happens to a parent that you have to take care of. There are so many variables and factors once you hit your mid-50s to late-50s that you are not in control of. That's the fact. And so why are we avoiding going to a class, eight hours of education, so you know how close you are? And, oh, by the way, I said this last segment, Paul, there is a risk to continuing to work. People assume, and this is why they avoid this. They don't fully understand. They're scared. They don't know if they have enough. They don't know how much they can take. They don't know how they're going to create their cash flow. There's all this uncertainty. So they don't plan. They avoid and they don't retire thinking if I just keep working, well, I'll be okay because how can I be harmed if I've got another year of work in me? I'm going to save more money, another year of growth in my investments. Well, people are good. There's a lot of people learning that right now and over the next 12 to 24 months are going to learn the risk of continuing to work when you already had enough to give you what you want. This is exactly what Warren Buffett was saying. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. And I know it's counterintuitive, but for many of you, there are many of you out there. We're meeting them all the time. You continuing to work is hurting you, is going to hurt your retirement because you're going to be forced out with a lot less. And so that's why you need to figure out what you have and how close you are, Paul. No, I mean, I, and, and these are the things that we, I mean, again, it goes back to, to education. I mean, if you really want to have control, knowledge is power, right? This is the power of, of learning. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about all the headwinds that you're going to face by not making the decision. As you said, the biggest issue is you don't always get to choose. And the last thing you want to do is be forced to retire when you weren't prepared. And there are a lot, a lot of bad things that can happen if you're not well prepared. And those are the things that we talk about in the class, right? That's what we talk about.
So next segment, Paul, let's talk about all the people that had way too much growth in their portfolios. They were taking way more risk than they needed to in the expectation of the general public of what return should look like over the next 10 years versus the whole entire industry's uh, projections and the disconnect and why so many people are going to get caught because they got, they got fat and happy. That's what it is. They, Mark was great. We had a decade. It was amazing. So attend one of our eight hour courses. We're teaching them at almost all the major universities. It's eight hours in length. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation. We teach it in one full Saturday or two evenings, four hours each evening. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we will return with Kirk and Paul. There's much more Retirement Education Hour coming up next. I'm here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we want to make sure you've signed up for the foundation's courses. These are retirement planning courses. They are intensive and they're designed to allow you to feel more confident as you move forward closer to retirement. Here's how you can get registered. There's two ways. You can go online to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. When you're there, you can see locations, dates, times. Find one that works for you and get registered because spots fill up quickly. Kirk and Paul want you to do that today. You can also reach out by phone. Here's the phone number, 800-240-8981. I want you to know these courses are designed for two ways. You can either attend virtually. They stream these courses so you can attend in the comfort of your own home. You can also attend in person and they're held at major Michigan universities, making it convenient for you to find one close by. The University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Troy and Novi campuses or Oakland University, your choice. Again, go to retirementplanningedu.org. We've been talking about timing today, but I also want to get into the mindset of so many people, Kirk and Paul, who were kind of lulled into this feeling of safety because things went well for a really long time, didn't they? Well, they did. And I think a lot of people got caught. And you know, it's, and I use this analogy a lot is you all, there's many of you who had already won the marathon. You literally won the race. You had what you need, needed to give you what you want. You had everything and you won. And then because you didn't plan, because you didn't attend one of our eight hour courses, seriously, I'm not kidding, that you got to educate yourself in your expectations, your short, your, your Americans, we have, we, 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 our memories are short, that markets have cycles and those cycles this late in your life, when you're so close to retirement and you don't have control of when you're going to retire always. Can, you can get trapped and so many people are getting trapped right now and they had already had what they needed to give them what they wanted they won the race they won but you guys are keep running many of you keep running the last 10 miles because you don't either you don't know you have what you need you don't understand what your money can do here i'm going to blow people away and and i i just a little off topic but i'm gonna blow you away if you're in your mid-60s you can Take withdrawal rates. You can withdraw from your investments. Six, seven, eight percent. We do it and we show and teach it in the class all the time. Meaning, if you got two million dollars and you're in your mid-sixties, you got you you should be able to take a hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year of cash flow with zero chance of outliving your money. But instead of because you don't understand everything so perfect, and you're a really smart person. And you're intimidated or you don't want to admit you're intimidated, but there's anxiety. There's no risk to keep working. Well, many of you got trapped. You got trapped being taking on too much risk, too much growth, betting that the market would continue and tech would continue like it did, was doing. And you got trapped. And Paul, I say this all the time in our class when people show up at the class. Why didn't you come to our class last year? I know many of our listeners listen to us three, four, five, six, seven times before they finally register for a class. And I challenge people in the class, why didn't you register originally when you heard us? What was it? Because things were go, so, going so well. Why didn't you come to the class? You could have avoided so many of these mistakes. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, Kirk, when you as, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, there are many reasons, right? I mean, I like to think greed isn't the reason, right? I think for the most part, people, you know, didn't continue because of greed. I mean, I think it just always boils down to, and this is why the biggest risk is people underspending, not overspending for many of our listeners, right? I think the biggest issue is that people just don't know. There's so much noise out there. All you hear about is you don't have enough. You don't have enough. You don't have enough, right? And I and unless right. unless you've really planned, and we're going to talk about what a plan is, but I, I think the majority of the people that didn't make decisions when they should have didn't make decisions not because of greed, because they just didn't know. They they didn't know they had enough. And Paul, in the back you, of their mind, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. I'm just going. So in the back of their mind, they're always thinking, I don't have enough. I got to keep getting growth. I got to keep working. And, and that's, so, that's the sad truth of so many people who've gotten caught is that so many of them didn't need to get caught if they just would have known they had enough. Our listeners need to realize our, the financial service industry, the whole industry, everybody in our business has an incentive to not see you spend your money, right? The less you spend, the more money the advisor makes, the mutual fund managers make, the custodians make. The less you spend and the more they in the, the financial service industry has of your money to manage, the more they make. So they're of course they're gonna sow doubt and fear. And you ask, well, why don't they just show us how to take more money and how much we can take? Well, there's they make less money by teaching you how to take more money. I please hear us. Here's that's that's one of the issues, right? So there's the other issue of those who think they figured it out, right? For a decade, it was easy, Paul. I mean, you just needed to be a good saver. That's all you had to be. Just be a good, you didn't have to be a good investor because everybody made money, whether you were good investor or not. And by the way, it's measurable. I don't think you're going to like what we showed you if we measured how well you've done compared to what you should have done. Everybody made money. You could have thrown a dart at the wall. You made money over the last 10 years. And so, Either people got overconfident, thinking they figured this out, I'm smart, I I subscribe to this newsletter, I I, I read the right magazines, I get the Motley Fool, they all have it figured out, and I'm just following their guides. Well, you all just got smacked in the face, didn't you? And when you were 40, you can afford to get smacked in your face and lose money because you had time. You cannot afford to get smacked in your face at 55, 60, or 65 years old. Because there's too many variables you can't control. You can't control when you're going to be forced to retire. You can't control when there's a health event. And you can't control what the market conditions will be as you start pulling money out of your investments. And that is the trap. And that's why you don't wait until something happens to plan. Everything you do should be based upon what do I need to give me the retirement I want. But none of you are doing that. I'm serious. None of you, not, not one of our listeners have done it because that's not what our industry teaches. They teach simplified solutions. One size fits all. And that one size is talking to the average baby boomer who only has $200,000 saved. Not you listeners that have a million, two, three, four, five million. Come to an eight hour class. It's a $29 donation to charity. You can come in person at just about every major university in Michigan we're teaching. It's eight hours in length, the master's level course, or we're streaming it. We've made it as easy as possible. If you'd like to attend, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. It's always a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we have a great program here today as we've been talking about the timing of retirement, how to retire successfully. So much of this is covered by the foundation in their courses, which are really intensive master's level courses on retirement planning. And this is a way to help you feel more confident. You probably look around at what's taking place geopolitically, maybe in Washington, D.C., you take a look at the markets and the economy and you think, what could this mean for me and my retirement? Can I even retire? Well, Kirk, Paul, and the other instructors at the Retirement Education Foundation know that there is a lot of concern out there. So these courses are designed to address some of those concerns and help you 
feel confident when you think about your retirement. Here is how you can get registered. You can go to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You'll see many of the locations where these courses are held. You'll see the dates and the times. We want you to register now because they do fill up quickly. So reserve your spot. You can also call 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, these courses are taught virtually. So you can stream the course and take the course in the comfort of your own home, or you can attend at one of the of several universities right here in our community, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus or Oakland University. So call or go online today. You know, I heard Paul say something earlier, Kirk. He said that the concern that the two of you have, it's not so much that people will outlive their savings. It's more that they will underspend. That really kind of caught me by surprise. It's a real concern for you. Well, it is because our the, the financial service industry, the entire financial service industry has done such a remarkable job of creating fear and doubt to get you not to spend your money so that they can make more money. I mean, really, it's that simple. The less you spend, the more they make. I know that's hard to imagine, right? But sincerely, one of the biggest mistakes we see people make that are coming through our classes is that they way underspend what they otherwise could have spent. In other words, they're underspending, not overspending. And we can see it a couple different ways. It can be just taking less money than they need to, or uh, or they want to, I should say, less money than they want to, or, or waiting to retire too long, longer than they needed to. See, that's the unique part about the Retirement Education Foundation. It is a charitable program. And when you come to a class, when, when, when Paul and I and Josh and Michael are teaching these classes, we're not there to sell you something. We're not trying to convince you to work with us. So it's not about building relationships. We're going to tell you things you don't want to hear. And you can see if you've listened, you can at least hear if you've been listening to our radio show, we're not always the most polite in being direct and telling you you're making mistakes. We're not afraid to do that. We're going to tell you. We're going to give you the truth. We're going to tell you all the problems with the financial service industry. And we're also going to tell you all the mistakes you're making in your general mindset following these general rules. Look, everything out there, the calculators online, everything that you're using to plan for retirement was designed for the average baby boomer. And I'll say this every segment until we're off the radio. The average baby boomer retires with $200,000 saved. That's all they have. That's what they have, $200,000. In fact, almost 40% of retirees, all they have is Social Security. So when you're retiring with a million, two, three, four, five, six million dollars, our fear, Paul and I's fear for you isn't that you're going to outlive your money. It's just you're going to underspend what you could be spending or retire or working longer than you need to. Paul, there's a lot of interesting data around this. I know you wanted to share. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, you know, Kirk, every show we throw out data, right? We love data. Data, you know, there's a lot of data out there. I think this data in some ways is, is the most disturbing. And, and, and there are two pieces of data I want to share. There was a survey done recently where it asked people who were planning on retiring and asked people that were in retirement this question regarding spending. More than 50% of the retirees, people who were planning on retiring, were planning on maintaining or growing their assets in retirement rather than spending them. And when they asked people who were actually in retirement, two-thirds of those people in retirement were actually preserving or growing their assets in retirement, not spending them. And let me tell you, it wasn't because of legacy. It wasn't because they wanted to leave money to their children or grandchildren. It's fear. It's because... It's fear. It's fear. And you know, Kirk, when, when we have this, when we talk about this subject, I can't help thinking about clients that we've, people that we've met, that we've helped, who've passed away, or people we've met in classes who passed away and never got to enjoy the retirement, died with more money than they started with. Their kids are happy. Their grandkids are happy, but they never enjoyed it. That, to me, this is what's so sad about people who are underspent. And it's all because of fear and a lack of planning. It all goes back to they didn't know. They just Paul, didn't know. Think, Paul, do you think it's an accident that all the major institutions now all – listen to the commercials, radio, TV. It's not an accident that everyone's focusing on retirees. 
right? It's no. not an accident. They, they celebrate that we're going to have the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of our country. $76 trillion will pass from you, the baby boomers, to your children. And that's great. I mean, that's wonderful. I know for me, generational wealth, legacy is, is something that I've always strived for since I was a young man. It was always important because of our childhood, Paul, that you and I grew up in. And by the way, anyone that doesn't know, we are brothers, long story, but Paul and I are truly brothers. Um, I'm telling you folks that, that our industry is, is incentivized to get you to spend less. That, that is the facts. Your strategy, and maybe we talk about this next segment, this is the mistake people are making is they're behaving in their, in, their investment strategies and everything they do is using the same things that, that made them successful in accumulating their wealth. But what you, what you, have to, you have to decide when you're going into retirement, is your goal to leave a lot of wealth to, exp to grow your wealth or create more wealth for the next generation? If that truly is important to you, well, then that's great, and, but there's better ways to do it than you spending less. That, that's why wealthy people have life insurance. That's why. So they can spend freely and make sure their children get a ton of wealth. If your goal is just not to outlive your money, there is a way to do something called a controlled spend down without outliving your cash flow. That's why in our classes, we can teach people, we teach people how to take out seven, eight percent, six, seven, eight percent in your early to mid sixties with zero chance of outliving your money. All you have to do is go to an eight hour course. It's taught at all the major universities and we're streaming them from the university so you can be in your home if you want. It's a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And there's more Retirement Education Hour right after this. Here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, we're glad you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour. Of course, Kirk and Paul, they are financial instructors, and you hear them each and every week here on the program. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation, but the foundation also features courses, and these courses are designed to help you with your retirement planning knowledge, really educating you and making you feel more confident about this next stage of life. You don't want to go into retirement without a plan, and you want to know how to put that plan together. It does not happen by accident or a hope and a prayer, it does take knowledge. And so these courses are designed to arm you with the knowledge you need, and we want you to register today. Here's how you can do it. Go to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call 800-240-8981, and you can plan to attend in person at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State Novi or Troy Campus, or Oakland University. If you'd rather attend a streaming class, you can do that as well. These are taught virtually, and you can attend in the comfort of your own home. So go to the website or call, and again, that web address is retirementplanningedu.org. All right, so we talked about underspending and how that's actually a concern that the two of you have for many people out there. But boy, I would assume that as you're planning for retirement, you have to use some different strategies here. And if you don't, there is a risk that you could draw down and overspend, leaving you with nothing. Is that the case? So it is, Megan. I would rephrase it a little bit. It's not that you've overspent. It's that you didn't have the right strategies in place because you don't recognize that the distribution of your wealth is very different than the accumulation of your wealth. Now, I need some of our listeners to hear us for a second because they're not going to like what we're saying. And I, these are going to be the people that have some wealth, that have some experience, that they're financially savvy. They could be CFOs, CPAs, engineers. They've done their homework. And what you have, I hope you appreciate the homework you've done is the financial service industry's homework that, you know, you're, you're limited to the information they give you. And there isn't a lot of great information on how to maximize your income. It's a lot of fear about how you're going to outlive your money, right? Look, if you use, look, I keep saying, look, and I, 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 cause I get frustrated. We have helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people. We have taught thousands and thousands of people. We've been teaching classes to Thousands of people over 10 years now, right? 
in our private practice, we're responsible for over 1,000 retirees, people within 10 years of retirement through retirement, and over $2 billion. We, we have the data, the experience, and the knowledge. And we practice what we preach in our private practice. So therefore, we're doing comprehensive, very advanced retirement planning, which we teach in the class. And the one thing I can promise you, I can promise you this, you're not going to like this, but I can promise you, it isn't the, the returns, the average returns you generate on your investments that is going to drive your success or not. Your average returns on your investments are not going to be what determines whether you outlive your money or not. It will not be that. I know that is hard for you to hear. I know that is not anything that you've read. I, and, and we quantify this in our eight hours of, uh, of classroom. Sequence of returns is a massive risk to you. What's going to drive your success is when do I take income from which accounts during market volatility? It's as simple as that. So it can't be just focused on growth, 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 growth. I have to have some alternative strategies in different accounts to pivot to when we have unexpected market events that are going to happen four to six times throughout your retirement. It's going to happen. We just don't know when it's going to happen. If you think you can predict when it's going to happen, well, then don't come to a class because you're smarter than everybody else because nobody knows. Okay. So I, I know this is difficult messaging for people to hear. But it's going to be your income plan, your withdrawal strategies is going to drive whether you outlive your money or not. It, it, it won't be how, the amount you're taking out, but it's where you're taking it from. Right, Paul? I mean, does, I know it's hard to quantify here. In no, a I mean, few no, minutes. no, no, no I, think, no, I think you said it perfectly. And I think, you know, again, I think, I think it all goes back to a lack of knowledge and a lack of planning. Right. I think at the end of the day, the reason why, I mean, a couple of reasons. One, you know, as you talked about, our, it's sort of our industry. But part of it is, is if you don't know that you have enough, then you're going to continue thinking you have to grow. Right. If you don't know that you have enough to retire and really focus on the distribution phase of your life and focus on that, not growth, then all you're going to do is keep focusing on I need more, I need more, I need more. It always goes back to a lack of planning. And, and I think in the last segment, I'm hoping that we actually spend a little time explaining because I, you, everybody who's listening thinks they have the plan. They all think they got it. So they're scratching their head thinking, I have a plan and it's still not working. You don't have the plan. That's the problem. You actually don't have what we're talking about. Again, I think it just goes back to a lack of planning. It's not greed. It's not greed. It's not ego most of the time. It's fear and a lack of knowledge and planning. That's what it boils I'm, down to. I'm going to add one more thing, Paul, to that list. Yep. Fear, lack of knowledge. Here's another thing. It's conditioning. Yes. The financial service industry is conditioned to all of you. No matter how smart you think you are, we are all conditioned by the information we consume. And the financial service industry spends hundreds, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars over the years, literally conditioning you to behave the way they want you to behave. And the behavior is we're going to use simple solutions for really difficult problems. And we're going to make it one size fits all. I mean, forget the investments. You all think it's the investments. It has not, it's not the investments that's going to drive your success in retirement. I know you think it is because that's, you've been brainwashed because the financial service industry, that's their, right now, that's the only value proposition they're offering you. That's it, is that they know how to invest your money better than you do. In fact, they've convinced you, they push out this education to get you to try to do it yourself so you can stumble and fail, get burned, and then go to them to take care of your money. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's con you've been conditioned this way, right? So you think this 4% rule, you think these general rules, these e-money, money guy pro plans, you think that's what's going to be the solution. It's not the investments, folks. It's not. It's where you're taking your income from during different market volatility, different market timing. It's not what you're investing in. It's not changing your investments. It's changing where you're taking your income from. I know that's confusing. We spent, it's the reason why our eight hour class, it's a master's level class so that you know all the levers. So you learn the levers so you can avoid outliving your money and maximizing your income. And all you have to do is sign up for an eight hour class. It's the same message we keep telling you. All you have to do is make a $29 donation, attend one of our eight hour courses. If you'd like to register, go to retirement planning edu.org that's retirement planning edu.org 
and we will return. Much more with Kirk and Paul on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're so glad you're with us today here on the program. Megan Mozak joined by financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And throughout today's show, if you've been listening, you've heard us tell you about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses, really deep dives, intensive courses on retirement planning, how to plan for a modern retirement in a way that you're not leaving something out that is vital, that's critical to your success in retirement. Kirk, Paul, and the team there at the foundation, they believe you deserve a great retirement, and it starts with a plan. So get educated, get in the know, and you can do that by visiting the website and getting registered for the courses. Do that today. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call if you'd like to reserve your space. 800-240-8981. These courses are taught virtually or in person. So if you'd rather stream them at your home, you can do that. And you can attend in person at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy campuses, and Oakland University is also on the list. So make plans today to get registered. Go to retirementplanningedu. Org. We've covered a lot on the show. And, you know, we started off by talking about timing, Kirk and Paul. Is it too late? Is it ever too early to plan for retirement or to retire? And the two of you have really opened our, our eyes to so much of this. What I heard you continue to come back to time and time again throughout the show is the need to plan. Because really, all of this is a moot point if we don't have a plan, right? Well, it is. And so the disconnect, it was funny between segments, we had a discussion how people's perspectives of different things are so different, right? I mean, what reality is and our perceptions aren't always the same. And this is an example, sincerely, where so many people in their 50s and 60s, uh, even in their 70s, they, they think they have a plan. They've been told they had a plan. They really believe they have a retirement plan. The truth is, They have, they do have a plan, but it's generic. It's the same plan that every other person that logged into that website or every other person that went to that, that advisor It is important to understand that a plan is not what you invest in. So if all you have is a portfolio, yes, you might have a different portfolio than somebody else. Great. A plan is not an intern spending 30 minutes plugging in your numbers and your age and your goals and spitting out a 50 page report that tells you the probability of success in 50 different pages. It's the same thing in 50 different pages, 50 different charts, all taking out 4% per year with nothing mapped out with no accounts to pivot to during times of market volatility. So you don't have to change your lifestyle. It's none of those things. And so, so many of you think you have a plan because that's what you've been given or you went online to Schwab or Fidelity and they have the easy retirement where you can plug in. It's all the same thing. It's generic that you have put your goals and your amounts of money and it spits out the same outcomes, 4%, 3%. That's it. That's They're all the same, 3 or 4%. They're all the same. So a plan is going to tell you how much income you can take out on an annual basis And if there's a market event, what account you need to pivot to so you don't have to change your lifestyle. You don't allow a short-term market event to change how much money you're taking out. You should be able to take out 6, 7, 8% a year in your 60s for the rest of your life increasing. You should be able to do that without living your cash flow if you have a comprehensive plan. A plan should tell you if there's a long-term care event, what account you're going to pivot to and whether you or not you have protection. Paul, there's so much to a plan. It's the reason why it takes us in our private practice 60 hours to build each of our clients a customized plan for them. Taxes. I, there's so much around taxes. Go ahead, Paul. I'm sorry. I'm still no, no, no. You, you're on a roll. And I, you're on a roll. I mean, I, the problem is there's no way to cover it all, right? That's why the course is eight hours, right? But I mean, obviously, tax planning is a huge part of it. Healthcare planning, right? I mean, long-term care planning. 70% chance that if you're 50 years old or older, you're going to need some long-term care at $100,000 plus a year. If you don't plan for it, how, how are you going to cover it? There's so many things that you have to think about 
as you said, it's not just your investments. And I you know, Kirk, I want to say one thing. I think part of the challenge is people find comfort when they when they're working with a large wirehouse, right? And I'm not all of them. It, you know, you think just because you're with this large wirehouse and they say you have this plan and they say you're going to be okay, right? That it must mean something. It gives you comfort. The reality is you got to understand what their value proposition is and their goal is all about investing your money, right? And they're keeping your spe- money. And keeping your money. <laughs> I mean, unless they're spending 30, 40 hours building your plan and we know they're not, you don't have a plan, right? You don't have a plan. And it, what I love about our course, Kirk, what I love about it is we help people see what they should be looking for. Whether they can do it themselves is a different story, but at least they know what to look for. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't know what to expect. And that's what I love of our class. And, and we spend, a, again, eight hours teaching people what a plan really is. Paul, 96% of people choose the wrong th- timing around Social Security and its strategies because it's not done within a comprehensive plan, right? The taxes you pay on your RMDs and your dividends and your capital gains and Social Security all impact one another. It needs to be mapped out, iterations, running, trying to find the most efficient path throughout retirement to take the income. And if you create the most efficient plan, then you can take out much larger amounts, especially if you have pivot accounts to pivot to during times of volatility. Paul, look, there is a massive incentive for our industry not to have you spend your money. And it's really why when you walk in the door, they ask you, how much money do you need in retirement? That's the wrong question. You need to ask them, how much money can I take out in retirement? Just don't let me outlive my money. You need to ask them the question. They shouldn't be asking you because if you say $80,000 and you got 3 million bucks, you're getting $80,000 a year, right? Attend one of our eight hour courses. They're taught over a full Saturday or two evenings at most every major university. There's no reason to miss this. We're streaming the classes from the universities. If you don't want to come into the universities, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.